Hello, Acar here. Um, if you just saw part one, um, it was relatively short. Actually, a little over a minute. That's because the battery got too low for the flash, and the flash turned off on me. I'm sorry for that. And you can see, even in that short time, which was probably about a minute as well, the wings had gotten considerably larger again. And um, I did videotape a few more uh, of the other two that had hatched. And um, and I will post those around the same time as this, uh, as these two. And you'll get to see them. But yeah, this guy is um, drawing his wings out pretty quickly. And um, I only have two. I did have three as um, as I did have three pupae, but um, one of them when it hatched, it did survive for about a day, but then just you know, I don't know why it died. Um, it's it's rather odd, but um, that's what happens in nature sometimes. Even um, when you think you're safe and you think you've survived to adulthood. Um, if there was any type of complication in the pupae form internally that you may not be able to see externally, that could kill you. Or if you were bitten by a spider, um, that maybe, let's say if it was bitten by a spider that I did not see, then that would be, um, a, um, oh, look, I don't want him to fall, so let me just, uh, I don't want this guy to fall, so, um, let me just get him in a better position for you guys. Confirm stuff. There we go. So yeah, um, let's say if he's been by a spider that I did not see, um, then that would also kill it after uh, a short time period. And um, the thing is that um, why would not the others get bitten? If it was a spider, I have no idea what it was. But if it was a spider that bit it, then why would not not by the other ones? Well, Carolina sphinx moths actually contain nicotine in their blood and that's something that um spiders do not like and it's a deterrent for most spiders so let's say if um hypothetically if a spider bit one had a really bad taste in its mouth but the other one that one did die then likely uh that spider's not going to go after any more of these guys because it knows it's going to have a bad taste in its mouth not saying it was a spider i have no idea what the cause of death was but just as an example and a little fun fact if you will about these guys. Aren't those wings just amazingly gorgeous? They're big. And once they're completely dry, it's gonna flatten them out, you know, like your average moth and not like a butterfly like he is now. And, um, yeah, this one is a female, I believe it's a female. And, um, in a day or two, it's going to be, uh, sexually mature. And I'll introduce her to the male who is already matured up. And, um, I will breed them. And I know they lay a lot of eggs, anywhere from 50, starting around 50, to hundreds of them. But, um, I'm not concerned, because I also know that many of those, uh, young that hatch will not survive the first few minutes, let alone, you know, hours, and then days, and then weeks. So even if it lays around 50 or 100 eggs, I may end up with maybe no more than 20 to, um... 20 being if it has over a thousand and maybe five it ha if it has like 50 it's only around a two to ten percent survival rate two percent in the wild because of predators ten percent in a home environment because you know no predators but still you have birth defects and uh you have micro uh, organisms that you can't see that also infect eggs you have fungus you have uh, bacteria all those things that infect the eggs and although the young may hatch that fungus is still inside of them and is still eating them away. You also have parasites and things like that that may um, kill off many of them as well. So maybe not any big predators like in the wild like a giant wasp, but other predators such as parasites, funguses, and things like that still do exist and claim a lot of lives. Um, I will give it, you know, one, after a day or two of mating, I will uh, put in a, a tomato uh, stem, a piece of the tomato stem in there for it to lay its eggs on, and then I'll put the eggs inside the um, container, the giant fish tank area where I normally have them. And I'll give them tomato and potato, stuff like that. And um, I may give them one tomato or one potato a day. That way, um, you know, survival of the fittest, the strongest ones will survive. 
the ones that um, aren't as strong or weaker, they'll die out, you know, from food and lack of food. Because having all that many, I would never be able to take care of them. And uh, you're not supposed to release them in the wild. And in the wild, they'd also have to deal with the, with the um, issue of hunger. So I'm going to try and keep it realistic in the sense that I'm going to only give them maybe one tomato or one potato a day. Maybe one of each in the beginning. And then as they get larger and it gets too full, then decreasing the food amounts until I only have a few. The uh, ones that do die in the process, I'll, I'll just let them, you know, decompose, but um, in a separate container, most likely, so that the other ones don't get sick from it and, and die. Because I do want at least a few to survive. And then I'll just keep doing that process over and over into the winter. Then in the summer, I may, um, one of the uh, schools, local schools, they have a summer camp with little kids and stuff like that. I offered one of the guys that, that works there and is a, a manager there, and uh, he does all the hiring and stuff like that, that um, when I breed them, that I would donate some of the babies next year, next summer, uh, and they could do a whole metamorphosis lesson with the kids. And I said if he wanted to... Um, if you needed someone to do those lessons, that I'd be willing to do it for him. So maybe I get a job out of this in the summer, next summer, maybe. Um, that would be nice, you know, make a few dollars. And, um, yeah. And in, in the meantime, just breed them to uh, get them ready for the summer. And, yeah, so this could be a grandparent of something that, uh, or a great-grandparent, really, of um, a greater cause. Because, um, yeah. So, that'll be very interesting to see how, if that actually goes through or not. Now, I do believe this is a female. I could be wrong. You no, know, because it's never 100% certain without, like, a DNA test and stuff like that with any insect. Because you, although you have a general idea where the females have a less broad antenna and things like that and a bigger abdomen to carry more eggs, it's... The, you'll always have oh, oh, she peed on me a little bit, not much, but a little bit, it's a little bit disgusting. But anyways, um, um, what was I gonna say? Yeah, there's not always uh, exactly you know, every once in a while you'll have one that um looks just like a female, but is actually a male, or you'll get one that looks just like a male, but is actually a female, you know, because of genetic. Uh, issues because there's so many offspring that a few of them are bound to be um, not genetically um, accurate or genetically sound. But we'll see what goes on. You know, I believe strongly that this one is a female, and if it is, then I'll breed them together. Its abdomen is bigger, which is one indication its uh, antennae are not as broad as the other one. That's another indicator. But you can never be 100% sure unless you actually see them in the breeding process or you actually see one laying eggs. So yeah, once she's dried her wings, I'll put her back in there. And about <clears throat> three days later, that'll give them a day or two to uh, get to know each other and to breed and mate. And about three days after uh, uh, starting tomorrow is day one, I will introduce the tomato leaves and stuff like that for the later to lay her eggs. And hopefully I get some uh, more tobacco hornworms out of it. And of course, um, the raising process, I will film that, moments of that, for you guys to see and check out. So you can see the wings are from the, oh, from the beginning of part one, and, and beginning of now, of this part two, and now, how the wings have uh, dried out throughout all my talking. I know I talk a lot. But I'm just trying to kill the time because I know it takes a little while for the wings to dry out. It's been about 10 minutes from I st from when I started this video. Five minutes before I started part one. Um, a minute in uh, for the part one video. About five minutes waiting for my phone to charge up enough. And then 10 minutes in this. So that's around, what, 20 minutes? I, I believe, yeah. 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Um... So yeah, it takes around 20 minutes for the wings to um, finish um, inflating, for the blood to be pumped into the wings, and now it's just a matter of drying them out, and once they're dry, I'll put her away, 
where she can um, get to know the male. Let me show you. The wings are relatively dry. They're not 100% done yet, but they are getting really close to being done. Right now, it's been uh, 10 minutes of recording. I don't want to keep you too long. I think you've seen a lot of what you're going to see um, the rest of the drawing process. You're not going to see much difference in the way the wings look. You know, it's just going to be all that's on the internal. That's going to make it, um, you know, where she's going to be able to fly. So not much more to see with her at this time. I'm going to end the video now. Say goodbye to our uh, new female, I believe to be female. And, um, wish her a happy honeymoon with her new husband. If it is indeed a female. Bye.